It isn't common to find Muslims uniting on something today, nor was it ever a common occurrence in the past. So when you find all Muslim scholars, sects, and schools unanimously reporting a statement uttered by the Holy Prophet verbatim, well, you better pay attention. The Prophet has said, and I quote, Fatima to Sayyida to Nisa il Alameen. Fatima is the mistress of the women of the world. Now, let's take this statement apart to appreciate the gravity of what the Prophet is saying here. Four simple words that together hold the key to eternal bliss in both this world and the next. In one sentence, God's Messenger provides a blueprint for what Islam means and what a Muslim is supposed to do to achieve the satisfaction of their Creator. The first word, Fatima. Wama adraka ma Fatima. Most of us don't realize that despite the fact that Fatima lived for just 18 years and despite all the hardships she endured and the pain and difficulty she faced, Fatima lived a happy and fulfilling life. She left this world too soon, but only because she was assassinated. Through the pain and austerity, through the thick and thin, and ups and downs of this life, and in the midst of the hardships she experienced alongside her father and her husband, Fatima lived a life of contentment and joy. And in proportion to the degree with which we follow her lead, we too will be happy. Word number two, Sayyidah, meaning mistress, leader, role model. You catch the drift here. She must be imitated, emulated, and her every step meticulously duplicated. That's what being a mistress means. It isn't enough for us to simply love her or otherwise respect her as many Muslims would say. We must first get to know her, then use her example as a detailed roadmap for our own lives. At every twist and turn, we must ask the proverbial yet startlingly illuminating question, what would Fatima do? Word number three, Nisa. Fatima was a woman. That is significant on so many fronts, but perhaps most importantly, the fact that she is both relevant to and therefore most authoritative for, you guessed it, women. And if she is the gold standard, it means women must learn what womanhood means in the life of Fatima. How a woman should act according to Fatima. What a woman should do as per Fatima. What a woman should wear vis-a-vis -vis Fatima. Word number four, al alamin This last word is monumentally important as it immortalizes the superiority and authority of Lady Fatima. It means that no matter who says, all oh, the times have changed, we live in a different world now, things have evolved and Islam needs to be reformed, etc, etc, that such calls should be treated with the same level of skepticism as atheism. By saying Fatima is the mistress of the women of all the worlds from the beginning of time to the very end, the Prophet is solidifying the image of Fatima as the ideal woman, the quintessential daughter, the consummate partner, and the epitome of what a woman should be forever and ever. From her hijab and purity, to submission to her husband despite her impeccability, to her defense of God's vicegerent and divine authority, to her selfless giving and charity, to her refusal to be contaminated by outside immodesty, to her martyrdom so she could guard her veil and chastity, her every breath and every step and every act is and will always be the primordial gold standard by which every woman will be measured. is as timeless as the laws of physics, as immortal as celestial stars, and as incessant as morality itself. Unlike the dilapidated system of moral relativism that shapes our world today and that breeds the likes of depraved Hollywood celebrities and the Harvey Weinsteins and the Jeffrey Epsteins of our decadent times, Fatima is the objective barometer of what is good and the blindingly radiant icon of divine morals.